Chapter 1 Alyssa Romriel stepped out of her car into a huge puddle of slush. Salt Lake City could be beautiful, but the snow seemed never-ending on that dreary March day, and she would have done anything for sunshine. All around her were buildings covered with gray snow, and she could smell the smog. The parking lot of her gym was being redone, and the members were being forced to park on the side of the street instead of in the parking lot they were used to, leaving the gym a virtual ghost town. Alyssa couldn't stop going, though. No, even one day off, and she started to get pudgy again. She tried to watch what she ate, but it was so much easier to do another ten minutes on the treadmill instead. Learning to be mindful about her eating was difficult, because she'd always been slender until recent years. She took a deep breath, thinking about how very much she hated being a slave to this place. She'd always thought she was fit, with a trim waist and hips, but when she'd started dating Tim, he'd made it clear he didn't want to be seen with a woman as rotund as Alyssa. She had four sisters, and the others all commented on how thin she was, but obviously they didn't know her like Tim did. Walking through the door, she looked around her, noting the old gym equipment and the smell of old socks that always seemed to be part of a place where real bodybuilders worked out. And that's where she had to exercise. She'd wanted to become a member of a posh health club where she could work out and then sit in a sauna and maybe a hot tub. Where she could get a massage when her muscles were a little sore. But no. Tim had hooked her up with his friend, a personal trainer named Barbie. Barbie looked nothing like her name, though. She was built in a way that women rarely were, and her muscles had muscles. She did have blonde hair like a Barbie doll, but it was cut short and spiked straight up on top of her head. And she usually had the tips colored green or blue. Never a soft, feminine color, though. There was nothing at all feminine about this Barbie. You're late. Barbie barked at her. Alyssa sighed. By one minute, and only because I stepped in a bunch of cold slush when I got out of my car. Give me a minute, and I'll change into my workout clothes and be ready to go. Barbie merely grunted at her, and Alyssa hurried to the bathroom to carry out her plan. This place didn't even have a locker room. Alyssa changed out of her work clothes, a crisp blue skirt, a white blouse, and a blazer, complete with three-inch heels, and into a pair of sweats that were too big and an old t-shirt. She sat down and put on socks and shoes, and she was ready, physically at least. The next hour was grueling as Barbie put Alyssa through her paces. Barbie pushed her much harder than she would ever push herself, and throughout, she heard, you want to be strong, don't you? You won't get there if you don't push. When the hour was over, Alyssa wiped the sweat from her face and hurried into the bathroom. There were no showers, so she did a quick sponge bath with paper towels in the sink there and changed back into her work clothes. She had a date with Tim, and he expected her to look nice for him. She brushed her hair, added a pale pink lipstick, and hurried out of the gym, waving at Barbie, who was now grunting loudly as she lifted ridiculous amounts of weight. Being a gym rat suited the other woman perfectly, and Alyssa was sure she'd never seen her in anything but shorts. In her car, Alyssa hurried to the restaurant where she was meeting Tim, and she arrived five minutes later. Her last client had really cut into the extra time she put into her day, and now she was running late for everything. She hated being late. But she knew Tim hated her being late even more. Tim's car was parked out front, but he wasn't in it, so she hurried into the restaurant, realizing it had started snowing again. She did her best not to slip on the ice in front of the door and noticed a man who was carefully holding the elbow of his wife or girlfriend. She wished Tim did that for her, but he expected her to be self-sufficient, and she wanted to please him. They dated for more than seven years now not long after she'd received her real estate license and started doing well. From the moment she'd gotten her license, she'd been one of the best sellers in her firm. She was very good at what she did, and she had the paychecks to prove it. Of course, she tended to be good at everything she did, and she always had been. 
everything but relationships apparently, because it seemed that she was incapable of pleasing her boyfriend. When she walked inside, she spotted Tim at a table and wove her way through the restaurant to join him. She leaned down and kissed his cheek in greeting before sitting across from him and picking up the menu. She knew from past experience that if she didn't decide what she wanted quickly, he would choose for her, and she would be having a side salad for supper. And after her workout, she needed a real meal. Reading over the menu, she decided on a pot roast with mashed potatoes and carrots, all smothered in gravy. Tim wouldn't approve, but she'd tell him about her workout, and it would appease him. She hoped. She set the menu down and took a drink of the water in front of her. He'd obviously already ordered drinks, because he was sipping on a Coke. I'm sorry I was late. Tim shook his head. I don't know why you can't keep better track of your time. Alyssa sighed. She hated disappointing him. My last client ran later than expected, but he made an offer today, which thrills me. And then, at the gym, I stepped in a huge pile of slush, and the water got into my shoe. And I think Barbie worked me for an extra five minutes, just to get back at me for being late. Barbie wouldn't do that. I've known her for years, and she's one of the kindest women alive. Tim speared her with his brown eyes, making her feel three inches tall. You've known her longer than me, Alyssa said, neither agreeing nor disagreeing with him. She couldn't agree, and she'd learned long ago not to argue. Tim was always right. She knew because he told her. Often. How'd the job hunt go today? Terrible. Tim frowned. I swear no one in this town is hiring. Not for a man of my talents. They all want some IT guy. Alyssa knew Tim had no desire to be an IT guy. He was a computer programmer and had once worked for a game designer. When he'd had to leave that job, he was fired due to nepotism, he had aspired to do the same thing over and over again. So far, it hadn't happened. Maybe you could be an IT guy, just for a little while. I know you're getting behind on your bills, she truly didn't understand why he didn't just take a job when it was offered. His unemployment had run out, and he needed money. Badly. Because it would be a step down. I don't take steps down. Only up. Tim looked angry that she'd even questioned him. But you're not being offered a step up, she said softly, hoping he'd see reason for a change. No, I'm not, but I should be. The waiter came to their table then, and they each gave their order. After their server walked away, Tim shook his head at Alyssa. I can't believe you're putting that into your body. I missed lunch because I was so busy today, and then I had a pretty intense workout session. I think I can have some pot roast without putting weight on. But she was embarrassed that he was confronting her about it. You know better than that. He looked at her closely. It might be time for you to try a new hair color. That shade of brunette really doesn't look good on you. It makes you look mousy. This is my natural color, Alyssa said softly. Remember? We decided that I should let it grow out and become its natural color again. Well, he'd decided, and she'd capitulated. As always. Do what you want. I just don't think I should be expected to be seen in public with a mouse. The waiter slid their salads in front of them, and Alyssa took her first bite eagerly. She wasn't a fan of salad, but it was food, and she was hungry. I'll think about it. You do that. He forked up a bite of his own salad. I need to borrow some money. Alyssa immediately nodded, knowing what was expected of her. Even when he was working, she made more than double what he did. How much? She started to add this time, but she had a feeling that wouldn't go over well at all. He named a figure that she well knew was much more than his bills for a month. Why so much? Why are you questioning me? You know I'll pay it back. I need new suits for interviews. He gestured with his fork as he talked, 
flinging a small amount of ranch dressing at her. He expected her to eat vinaigrettes that were healthier, but he loved ranch. But you just got new suits six months ago. She knew because she'd footed the bill. He frowned. They don't fit anymore. She looked more closely at him, and she could see that he'd put on some weight. She couldn't mention it, because she knew how much it hurt when he mentioned her weight, so she let it go. I see. All right. I don't have my checkbook with me, but I'll get you the money tomorrow. Good. Their salad bowls were whisked away, and the entrees were placed before them. This restaurant was on the nicer side and usually one of her favorites. The night was not going well, though. She'd lost two pounds, and she had hoped he would notice and say something. Her mother certainly noticed and fussed over her whenever they saw one another. The atmosphere was intimate, with soft jazz playing in the background. The food was good, mostly comfort food, but there were grilled chicken and fish mixed in. The aroma made her stomach sit up and pay attention. She picked up her fork and took a bite of her pot roast, wanting to groan aloud it tasted so good. She knew it would just anger Tim, though. When they were finished eating, he slid the check toward her to pay. She tucked her visa into the slot in the black check folder and pushed it to the edge of the table for the waiter to pick up. What are your plans for the weekend? She tried to keep her voice casual. They'd been an item for so long that he often forgot to set up plans with her, and they went days between contact at times. I'm going skiing with some buddies. Tim leaned back in his chair, watching her face. No girls allowed. I see. Skiing was an expensive hobby of his. One of many. I hope you have a good time. Oh, I will. I always do. The waiter brought her card back, and she signed the slip, adding a tip and putting the card back into her wallet. I think I'll have to work. There are lots of people who are interested in seeing houses this weekend. She needed to have something to do, so he knew she wouldn't be sitting home alone, pining for him. They walked to their cars, and he watched as she slipped a little on the ice, catching herself at the last moment. Be careful. It would be embarrassing for both of us if you landed on your bottom on the pavement. When they reached his car, he kissed her briefly, and it felt as if he was going through the motions, kissing her because it was expected of him. I'll come by your office tomorrow to pick up the money. Alyssa nodded. Good night, Tim. He was already in his car and reversing out of the parking lot. She simply stood there, watching him drive away, before walking to her own car and getting in. She couldn't help but wonder when he'd started going through the motions of a relationship instead of really caring about her. He had cared once, hadn't he? After a moment, she pulled herself together and reached for the glove compartment and the emergency box of Junior Mints she always kept there. Junior Mints fixed everything. Chapter 2 Nick Piot dressed for work in the dark, not wanting to wake his sleeping fiancé, Cammie. If she was true to form, she wouldn't get up until noon, and then she'd spend her day frittering the time away. When he got home, she would say she'd been too tired to make dinner, and he would need to take her out somewhere. He sighed. She wasn't the woman he thought she was six months before when he'd asked her to marry him, and they'd moved in together. He glanced at her in the dark. She wore a black sleep mask to block out light, and yet she still complained if he turned on a dim light to get dressed in the mornings. Her blonde hair spread out over the pillow like a fan, and her face was completely relaxed. Or if it wasn't, it should be. Her twice-weekly facials he paid for should keep her face as relaxed as her well-massaged body. Nick left the room and sank down on the couch to put on his socks and boots. By the bits of sunlight streaming in through the window, he looked around the living room of the log cabin he'd built with his own hands on the weekends. It had taken him three years to finish it, but he couldn't imagine living somewhere he'd be prouder of. It was a three-bedroom, two-bath cabin with a well-equipped kitchen. 
Despite the modern kitchen, it still looked as if it was something out of a historical novel. He felt good about living there, and he would build on as his family grew, if it ever did. If he was going to go through with the lavish wedding Cammy was planning, then he doubted kids were even an option. She wouldn't let her figure go for something as unworthy as having his children. He got to his feet and headed for the door. Cammy complained if he rattled around in the kitchen in the mornings, making himself breakfast, so he'd stop at a maverick along the way. They didn't have his first choice in breakfasts, but they had something that would work for him. As he drove to nearby Garden City, Utah, from the tiny town of Richland, Idaho, where he'd been born and raised, his thoughts were still on Cammy and his dreadful situation with her. He needed to break things off, and soon, but he knew she was going to turn on the waterworks. Cammy wasn't a girl who cried naturally, he'd learned. She just turned on the tears when they suited whatever situation she was in. She manipulated people with her tears, plain and simple. Nick felt terrible even having these thoughts about the woman he was supposed to marry, but after several months of her doing nothing to even clean the house, he had gotten to this point. He worked all week, went home every day to take her out to dinner, and he spent his weekends catching up on cleaning and doing laundry. If he wanted anything done, he had to do it himself which wasn't how he'd seen her being a stay-at-home wife going. He was sure now that she had started the way she'd meant them to go on after marriage. He stopped for a breakfast burrito at the Maverick before he moved on to the job site. He was doing a bathroom renovation on a lake house in Garden City. The job would take about two weeks for him to do, and then he'd have to find something else. Summer was coming and since people tended to spend more time at the lake in the summers, they didn't usually want to have work done then. Summers were lean for a building contractor in the area, and he'd often have to drive out farther. The best he could hope for would be building a deck, because people understood that had to be done in summer months. When he got to the job, the lady of the house was waiting for him. Good morning, Nick. What's on the agenda today? She was wearing a skimpy nightgown, as she had every morning, to see him. It was still winter, and she had to be freezing. He was sure she wore normal clothes while her husband was there, and then ran off to change as soon as the man left. He couldn't imagine why she did the thing she did. Just finishing up the new flooring in the bathroom, and I'll start on the tile around the tub tomorrow. I think you're really going to like that new bathtub I just put in. He didn't look at her as he spoke. Mrs. Simmons took a step closer to him, trailing one finger down the front of his shirt. I'm sure I will. It looks big enough for two. I'm an engaged man, Mrs. Simmons. And there. That's why he couldn't break off his engagement for another week or two. He had to have a reason to get away from her. And I'm a married woman. I don't mind if you don't mind. She smiled up at him in a way that made his blood curdle. The woman wasn't the least bit attractive to him, because he hated cheating so much. I mind. He stepped back from her and turned toward the bathroom. I need to get to work. She sighed, obviously annoyed he wouldn't capitulate. He wasn't quite sure why she kept trying every single day, but she did. By lunchtime, Nick had worked out a plan. He would finish the job he was working, and then he would let Cammy know that he was breaking things off. He'd take a few days, between jobs, to help her pack up her things and get settled somewhere else. It was only right that he at least tried to help her start a new life without him. Having a plan in place helped him know that he was doing the right thing. Soon she'd be out of his hair, and he was sure she'd be in someone else's pretty darn quick. It was just the kind of woman she was. When he got home from work that day, there was no supper cooking, as usual, and Cammy was waiting on the couch for him, already dressed for supper in a short skirt and low-cut blouse. How he'd ever thought he wanted to marry someone like her truly escaped him. Hurry and change. I made reservations for supper at 6.30, and you're going to make us late. Not wanting to start an argument, 
he went into the master bath to shower and change. He put on jeans and a polo, knowing she wouldn't find it dressy enough, but it was about as dressy as he got, except for special occasions. She'd just have to learn to make compromises until he ended things with her. Just a couple more weeks. He walked into the living room and smiled to himself. He was counting down the days. Chapter 3 On Saturday morning, Alyssa did her usual weekend errands, hitting the grocery store first. She knew she was going to have a rough weekend, so she grabbed two tubs of Junior Mint ice cream, having no problem envisioning herself eating it straight from the carton. As she walked up and down each aisle of the store, she longed for a quieter life. When she'd been a girl, she had spent two weeks every summer and every weekend of the summer at Bear Lake, which was on the border of Utah and Idaho. Her parents still owned a lake house there, and she briefly wondered if she should go and spend some time there, but as soon as the thought crossed her mind, she received a phone call from one of her favorite clients. I have some free time today I didn't expect. Do you have time to take me to a few more houses I found? Carl Schmidt asked her. He was one of her biggest clients and was looking for a vacation home that was a little closer to the Park City, Utah area. Normally she didn't go that far out, but she was happy to do it for such a good client. I always have free time for you, she answered automatically. I can meet you at my office in an hour. Alyssa would have to cut her shopping trip short and finish up buying what she needed later, but she'd have enough time to check out, get home and put her groceries away, and change into work clothes before meeting him. That sounds good. Thanks, Alyssa. She hurried toward the front of the store, knowing she wanted the commission he'd be bringing in. As she stood in line, she bought three more boxes of emergency junior mints to put into her glove compartment. With the way things were going with Tim, she knew she'd need them. An hour later, she was dressed and at her office. Thankfully, Mr. Schmidt wasn't there yet, and she had time to just sit for a moment, reflecting on her terrible night on Thursday. She wasn't sure what had gotten into Tim lately, but she knew that he wasn't the man he used to be. Or maybe he just wasn't the man he used to seem to be. She spotted Mr. Schmidt walking toward her and he got into the passenger side of her car. Thanks for agreeing to meet me. I know you probably had other plans for your weekend. Alyssa genuinely liked the older man. He wasn't as snooty as most of the rich people she knew were. He was actually always thankful when she took him around. I'm so happy to do it. Which houses do you want to look at this time? This was their fourth trip to the Park City area and he always had a specific house or two in mind when they went to look. He gave her the addresses, and she plugged the first into her GPS. She knew the houses had come from listings that she'd sent him for the area, and she hoped this time they'd find the one he considered perfect for his family. He was in his late fifties, a widower with several grandkids. He wanted a place where his entire family could spend a couple of weeks together every summer just like she'd had with her family growing up. As she drove, he regaled her with tales about his twin grandsons, who were apparently perfect in every way, and she listened and laughed at the funny parts, even though she had no desire to laugh. Being a real estate agent meant that she needed to be on whenever she was with a client. The first house they looked at had Mr. Schmidt excited. This is what I'm looking for. Alyssa pulled up all the information she had on the house and told him what she could as they walked. The house is only five years old. The people who owned it before have decided they want to be at a lake and not the mountains. So, you benefit from their mind change. She led him up a flight of stairs. This is the master suite. It has a huge bathtub with separate shower. There are four other bedrooms on this level and two on the main level. You have three children? she asked. He nodded. That's perfect, too, because then each of my children can have a room with their spouse, and the grandkids for each family can have their own room. Sounds smart to me. They looked in closets and cabinets as they moved along. 
When they were finished looking at the downstairs rooms and the kitchen, he grinned. I don't even need to see the other place. The hot tub out back is staying, right? Yes, it is. So is the sauna. I'm taking it. Where do I sign? Alyssa smiled, pulling a contract out of her purse. She kept one on her at all times for just such an occasion. Let's get this filled out. Do you know what you want to offer? In less than 30 minutes, they were back on the road and headed to her office in North Salt Lake. She lived and worked out of North Salt Lake, but most of her business tended to be in Salt Lake City. It was also where she worked out. Thanks for sticking with me through all of my shopping, he told her. I think I would have driven anyone else crazy. I hope I'll be given a chance to review my experience with you. I have honestly enjoyed it, Mr. Schmidt. You made it easy for me. And he had. Very easy. After Alyssa dropped him off, she went into her office and did the paperwork on the sale, wanting to dance a little jig. The commission on the house would be good, but better than that, she'd found a vacation home for a wonderful man who would use it to make special memories for his grandkids. Memories like the ones she had of her family's lake house. When she'd finished filing the paperwork, she went back to the grocery store to continue her shopping trip. She didn't use a list and couldn't remember what she'd purchased, and she knew she would be doubling up on a few things. It was all right, though. She knew it would get eaten or donated. She often bought things she never ended up using, but food pantries were there for a reason. She bought all the stuff she needed to make her recipe for shepherd's pie for supper. She had tried dozens of recipes, and what she'd finally kept was parts of about six of them plus her own twist. The woman at the checkout was familiar to her, but not someone she knew by name or who knew her by name, which had her once again thinking about the simpler lifestyle in Richland, where she'd spent lots of time every summer on Bear Lake. A couple of years, she and her sisters had spent the entire summer at the lake, and her father, a dentist who specialized in TMJ, would spend four days a week working, and then he'd join them Friday through Sunday. Those had been the summers she'd liked the best. She treasured the memory of them. On her way home, she ran through Chick-fil-A for chicken nuggets and a frozen lemonade. It was what she needed, along with her junior mint ice cream, to make it through the weekend. She had some serious thinking to do about her relationship with Tim and decisions to make about what she wanted to do. She plopped down on the couch and reached for the remote, planning to watch some of her favorite rom-coms on her large flat-screen television. The walls were a pale blue, and the decor was different shades of the same color, with some white thrown in for accents. It was a cozy, feminine room which she always felt comfortable in. Spending time there and eating junior mints were always her solutions for having hard days. And they always seemed to work. She had her remote in hand and the ice cream and a spoon on the coffee table in front of her when her phone rang. Glancing at the display, she saw that it was Hannah, her childhood best friend who had been raised in Richland, right there on the lake. Hello. Alyssa hadn't realized just how much she needed to hear her friend's voice until that very moment. Hey, you. Hannah's voice sounded as sweet as ever. I hadn't heard from you in a while, so I figured I'd catch up. I have about 30 minutes between jobs today. I've been busy, Alyssa said by way of apology. Tell me what's going on in your world. Hannah sighed. The usual. I'm working days at the grocery store. Nights at Cooper's over in Fish Haven. And weekends are spent cleaning houses. I'm going to have that bookstore saved for in another 13 months. Do you believe? It's almost time. And I'm going to run the best bookstore the Bear Lake Valley has ever seen. Just you wait. I know you will. You're amazing. Alyssa couldn't imagine working all those menial jobs simply so she could open a bookstore, but she'd been raised very differently than Hannah had. 
Her friend had always had to work for everything she wanted, while Alyssa had been handed the world. She wasn't sure which was better, but she wished her friend would allow her to invest in her business so she could slow down a little. Well, thank you very much. No one can make me feel quite as good about myself as you do. Alyssa smiled. That goes double for me. Are you seeing anyone? Hannah laughed. Like I have time to see someone. I work a ridiculous number of hours and never take a day off. Who would I meet working so much? And where would I find the time to date him? Just asking. I think it would do you good to slow down a little. Remember, I'd love to invest. Nope. Thanks, though. The answer was quick. So, how's it going with Tim? Alyssa didn't miss the annoyance in her friend's voice when she said Tim's name. He's, strange. Always has been in my opinion, but what makes you think now is any different from always? Alyssa laughed a little, shaking her head. She needed some face-to-face -face time with Hannah, and not the kind that came from Skype or FaceTime. Real friend time. A short conversation was all she needed to know that. She missed her friend. He's just acting oddly. He kissed me goodnight the last time I saw him, and he didn't put any real, feeling behind it, if that makes sense. It was just a cursory kiss, because he was supposed to. And I asked him what he was doing this weekend, and he's spending the weekend with guy friends, because he wants to ski, but he told me it was a men's only weekend, like I was going to try to infringe on his plans. And who was paying for the ski weekend? Isn't he still unemployed? Alyssa sighed. He said he'd pay me back, she was tired of the constant drain he was on her finances, just like her friend, but, she had so much time vested in the relationship. She couldn't give up on Tim now, could she? Of course, he did. He always says that. Hannah sighed dramatically, and Alyssa could just picture her rolling her eyes. I wish you'd dump that jerk and just move on with your life. Would you be able to give up a seven-year relationship just like that? I feel like I should stay with him just a little bit longer. I'm sure he'll get a job soon, and he'll be back to normal. Alyssa, you know as well as I do that the man is not normal. Not even one little bit. He loves himself, and there's no room for him to love anyone else. He's using your money to go on a vacation that he told you you're not allowed to go on. He's got you all messed up in your thinking about your weight, which is perfect, by the way. It was perfect before you started dating him. I know. I know. But she didn't. She looked in a mirror, and she could see that she needed to lose weight. A significant amount of weight actually. And Tim told her the same thing, so he had to be right, didn't he? I'm just not ready to make any drastic changes to my life. I understand that. I also know it's time. And I don't need to yell at you about it. You'll figure it out on your own soon enough. And I have to go. Third house cleaning job of the day. Just remind me one more time that I'm doing this for all the right reasons. I'm going to be surrounded by books. Alyssa laughed softly. That's been your dream for as long as I can remember. It really has. And I'm going to make it happen. Bye. Love you, and I want you to come stay in your parents' lake house soon. It's been forever. With that, Hannah ended the call, and Alyssa sat staring at her phone for a moment. Was Hannah right? Was it really time to end a relationship that she'd had forever? How could it be time? After seven long years, she should get something out of the relationship, shouldn't she? They'd talked marriage. A little voice asked her if she wanted to raise children with someone like Tim, but she didn't let herself think about it too much. She couldn't. Not yet. Alyssa shook her head. She was being melodramatic and silly. Reaching for the remote, she switched on Notting Hill before reaching for her ice cream and a spoon. She was sure the ice cream would make everything clear, 
and she'd know exactly what she needed to do. Junior Mints fixed the world, and when they were in ice cream, their power was multiplied. She dug her spoon into the carton, not bothering with a bowl, as she watched Julia Roberts walk into a bookstore in Notting Hill. She sighed as she lost herself in the romance of the movie. She'd figure things out later. Chapter 4 Friday afternoon, Nick left work a little early, hoping to be able to fix supper himself and save a little money. Besides, Mrs. Simmons was coming on stronger than ever, and he needed to stay away from her. There was no excuse for cheating. Ever. He wasn't going to be the one to help her cheat on her husband, and he wasn't going to cheat on Cammy, even though she already had a foot out the door without knowing it. He would stay true to her until the day he officially broke it off. He stopped at the grocery store, another household chore that Cammy avoided like the plague, and grabbed some ground beef, some spaghetti sauce, a loaf of garlic bread, and a bag of spaghetti noodles. He knew Cammy would complain if wine wasn't involved in their meal, but he didn't like wine, and he wasn't about to buy it if he didn't like it. He was finished pandering to the girl. When he got to the front, he smiled at the checker at the register he chose. Hi, Hannah. How's things? Oh, busy as usual. How are things with you? And Cammy? He shrugged. Mostly okay. I'm staying busy, and Cammy isn't. He hadn't meant to say the words, and he wanted to clamp his hand over his mouth as soon as they escaped, but he didn't. They were true. Hannah just grinned as she quickly rang up his purchases. The store was small and fit the town perfectly. He could walk in, go exactly where he needed to go, and buy everything he needed in five minutes flat. A full-on grocery trip took a little longer, but only about 15 minutes. There wasn't a huge selection, but there was food, and he could get it quick. That made up for the lack of selection in his eyes. Besides, if he wanted a bigger store, he could drive over to Montpelier or even to Logan in Utah. She gave him the price, and he pulled out a debit card. How are your parents? Hannah asked as he swiped the card and went through the questions the card reader asked. They're good. They're in Tucson now, living the retired dream. Sounds like my folks. Mom is pestering Dad to get a condo in Florida, and Dad thinks it's a waste of money. They argue about it constantly. Hannah handed him his receipt. I'd say, come again, but I know you will. She winked at him. They both knew they were friendly, and there would never be anything more between them, and they were both happy with that fact. He laughed. Always. Have a good day, and I'm sure I'll see you soon. Hannah nodded, smiling as she moved on to the next customer. Nick thought a lot of Hannah, knowing she worked three jobs to try and make her dream come true. She had been working three jobs since she graduated from high school, and it wore him out just thinking about the sheer number of hours she had to work. He couldn't imagine having to work that way, but if he had children, he guessed he would do what it took to feed them. Still, it was a hard way to live. He put the food into the front seat of his truck and started the engine. He wasn't looking forward to Cammy's annoyance at him cooking dinner and not taking her out. He wasn't sure why anyone would want to eat out every night of the week, but Cammy did. When he pulled into his driveway, there was a car he didn't recognize. He looked at it for a moment, noting the Utah plates and the car seat in the back. It was a small-sized SUV and looked like it was made for hauling children around. Nick couldn't think of a single friend of Cammy's who had small children, but he certainly didn't mind her having friends over. There was still snow covering the shrubs he'd planted on either side of the driveway, and the trees all had a light dusting. The snow was deep in front of the house, but he'd painstakingly removed it using a four-wheeler equipped with a snow plow. His driveway was long, and he didn't think he could shovel at all. Well, he knew he could, but it would be hard work. Nick opened the door and noticed the lights were off, which was odd. If Cammy was entertaining someone, she should be with them in the living room, shouldn't she? 
He put the groceries on the counter and walked through the house to the master bedroom, where he could hear low voices. Pushing the door open, he stopped where he was, in shock. Cammy was in bed with a man he didn't know. He cleared his throat. When you're finished, I'd like to talk to you, Cammy. He was surprised he didn't feel hurt by it. After all, they'd been together for two years. All he felt was relief. He could get rid of her now, and he wouldn't even feel an ounce of guilt for it. He closed the door and walked back to the kitchen, intent on cooking his supper. She wouldn't be eating it with him as planned, but he was still going to enjoy his meal, the first meal he'd eaten at home in a good long while. He was just finishing up browning the meat when Cammie walked into the kitchen, wrapped in a bathrobe. I guess you finished? Did you tell your friend to leave? Nick asked, not bothering to give her more than a cursory glance. She sighed. I did. I'm sorry you had to catch us that way, but a woman has needs. You should have been treating me like a princess and making love to me every night instead of being so worried about your career. She crossed her arms over her chest, obviously ready for a fight. He looked at her then, wondering what he'd ever seen in her. Her blonde hair was obviously from a bottle, though she still denied it. She always seemed to think she was better than the people around her, and he got sick of apologizing for her. No, there were no feelings left inside him for her. So, I was planning on finishing the job I'm working and taking a few days off to pack and help you get out of my house. You've saved me the trouble. Leave. Now. You can't mean that, Nick. I know you love me. She stepped closer to him, pressing herself against him. All he felt was disgust. She hadn't even showered after having sex with someone else, and she was trying to offer herself to him? He put his hands on her shoulders and gently pushed her away from him. No. I don't. Leave. I'll pack your things up this weekend and put them on the doorstep Monday morning before I leave for work. If anything is still here when I get home Monday evening, I'll burn it. Every last thing. Her face flushed with anger, her eyes narrowing. You can't do this to me. Where am I supposed to go? Your parents live thirty minutes from here. Your lover in there can take you home with him. I really don't care where you go, Cammie, as long as I don't have to put up with you for another minute. What are you doing home early anyway? she asked, tapping her foot with her arms tightly crossed against her chest. She obviously wasn't giving up without a fight. Nick saw the man she'd been in bed with flee the house, and he chuckled. Look at that. Your lover boy was afraid I'd hurt him over you. Not happening. You don't matter enough for me to fight anyone. Cammie raised a hand to slap him, but he caught it in the air before it connected. You're a cold-hearted jerk. He shook his head. Go away, Cammie. I'm tired of looking at you. He dropped her hand and turned to drain the grease off his meat into a coffee can he kept for just such a purpose. He had no need to speak with her again. She just needed to do as she was told for once in her miserable life. What about the wedding invitations? They're already out. He didn't even respond as he filled a pot with hot water and put it on to boil. She could deal with the invitations. She could show up for the wedding for all he cared, but he wasn't spending another dime on it, and he wouldn't be there. He preheated the oven for the garlic bread and added the sauce to the meat. He'd start packing right after supper. He whistled as he finished seasoning the pasta sauce and walked around to sit on one of the bar stools he'd carved out of an old oak tree. Everything in his cabin was handmade and of the best quality. And she was throwing it, and him, away. Good riddance to her. Nick, please, if you'll just listen to me. He pulled the AirPods he used while he worked from his pocket and stuck them in his ears, hearing the audiobook he'd been listening to come through the speakers loudly and clearly. Finally, Cammie got the hint, and she hurried off to change into real clothes and get out of his house. 
At least that's what he hoped she was doing. He wasn't putting up with any more of her nonsense, and if she came back out in her robe, Nick was going to throw her out in the snow still wearing it. It wouldn't hurt him even a little bit to do so. Thankfully, he didn't have to go to that extreme, and she stomped out into the hallway, glaring at him. She said something to him, but he couldn't hear it over his book, and he watched as she left with a small suitcase and the clothes on her back. He picked up his phone and called the grocery store, hearing his book pause and the call go into his AirPods. I need some moving boxes? Do you have any extra lying around? Nick? The voice asked. Hannah? Yeah, it's Nick. Cammie's moving out, and I need to pack her stuff up this weekend before she gets back. There was silence for a moment. We have boxes. Come and get them when you're ready. I'll be there as soon as I finish eating. Thanks. Make sure someone knows I'm coming. Nick was sure she was leaving for the day. It was time for her second job. I will. I'm about to head to Cooper's, so I'll make sure the manager gives them to you. Sorry. I hope she was the one for you. Nick smiled at the friendliness. He had tried dating Hannah once in school, but neither of them had felt anything for the other. He thought they were probably too much alike for things to work out between them. They'd stayed friends, though, and he was glad. Thanks. I already knew she was not the woman I was looking for, but I appreciate the sympathy. With those words, he ended the call and went to check on his spaghetti. He was hungry, and he was going to enjoy his meal, no matter what kind of chaos was going on around him. Chapter 5 Alyssa finished her last showing of the day, and because she had no plans for the weekend, she went to the grocery store so she could spend the entire weekend at home, ensconced in front of the fire, watching movies. Or maybe she'd re-binge watch something. That was always fun. As she was looking at the different cheeses, trying to decide which one to have with crackers and summer sausage over the weekend, her phone rang, and she pulled it out. She half hoped it was a client who wanted to see something over the weekend so she wouldn't feel so dreadfully alone, but instead, it was her mother. Hey, Mom. What's happening in your world? Her mother's voice was sweet and soothing, and Alyssa always felt better after talking to her. She was definitely closer to her mother than she was her father. All of her sisters felt like they were closer to their dad, but not her. She'd take her mother any day of the week. I just wanted to let you know that your father and I are going up to the lake for the weekend. Oh, that's awesome. Alyssa considered asking to go with them for a moment, but she decided against it. She needed to be on call for her clients. If you run into Hannah, give her a big hug for me. You know I will. Oh, and I have a professional question. Alyssa smiled. That was the real reason her mother was calling. She didn't usually check in with her daughters when she wanted to spend some time out of town. There was no need, as they were all adults. Only Lauren still lived at home, and that was because she'd just graduated from college in December. With a liberal arts degree, no less. What was she supposed to do with a liberal arts degree? Alyssa had offered her a job working for her but she'd have to get her real estate license, and Lauren was sure she didn't want to do sales. What else could she do with a liberal arts degree, though? I'm here to be your real estate expert. She found the cheese she wanted and dumped it in the cart, moving down to get some skim milk to eat over her cereal. Crunch berries were in order, and she didn't care at all what Tim thought about it. I'm so glad, because I don't have any other daughters with your expertise. There was amusement in her mother's voice, and that thrilled Alyssa. Her mother had the best sense of humor, and she was so drawn to it. We're thinking about selling the lake house. We only make it up there every few months, and we're paying more for maintenance than we're getting use out of it. What do you think it's worth? No. Alyssa couldn't imagine losing the house where she had so many wonderful memories. 
She could close her eyes and picture sitting on the front porch swing or having a water balloon fight on the back deck while her father grilled burgers for them for supper. She could see the fireworks display they had always watched from the yard put on right there in Richland. It would break her heart to not have the house available to them. Alyssa, none of you girls have been to the lake house in at least three years. Why would we keep it when there's another family who can buy it and make the same kind of happy memories we have in it? I guess I just like knowing it's there, so I can go whenever I want to. Someone reached around her for butter, because she'd stopped in the middle of the aisle, unable to move any farther. She moved out of the way, but she couldn't keep shopping. Not while talking about this. I know. But it's not logical or economical. Your dad and I are thinking about getting a condo in Arizona. It's time we were in a warmer climate. Alyssa closed her eyes against the tears. Not the lake house. Anything but the lake house. It's probably worth between five hundred to six hundred thousand, depending on the market at the lake. Do you want me to find a real estate agent to help you with the sale? That would be really nice, if you don't mind. I know it's not what you want, but I think it's what your father and I need. We'll spend summers at the house in Kaysville and winters in Arizona. Or maybe Florida. We're thinking of looking near Disney because when the grandbabies start coming, we'll want to be able to take them. Hint hint. Alyssa laughed softly. When do you leave for the lake? We're on the road now. Go ahead and text me the name of the real estate agent, because you know how bad service is between here and the lake. All right. It's no problem. But it was. It really was. The lake house. Alyssa tucked her phone back into her purse and continued her shopping trip, but now all she could think about was the lake house. About the beautiful little town of Richland, Idaho, and how very much she missed it. As she checked out, she thought about seeing a friendly face at the register like she would have in Richland. Maybe it was time for her to visit the lake house. One last weekend with all of them there, before the house sold. They could pack and cry and reminisce. She felt like a part of her childhood was being sold, the most important part. When she got home, she found the name of a real estate agent for her mother and texted it to her not wanting to help but not wanting to stand in her parents' way either. She was so conflicted about the whole thing. Couldn't they rent it out weekly for vacationers and use it when they wanted? There had to be other options than selling. It was too important to sell. Alyssa ate an entire box of junior mints, calling her sister, Taylor, who was two years younger than her. Hey, Taylor. Did mom call you? No. Why would mom call me? Taylor asked, sounding confused. She called me to ask for the name of a real estate agent in Idaho. They're selling the lake house. Alyssa had no doubt her sister would feel the same way she did. They'd shared too much in that house. No. Alyssa heard the same panic in her sister's voice that she'd felt herself. Yup. She says we never use it, and they want to move to Arizona or Florida. Way to be cliched retired people, mom and dad. Taylor was quiet for a moment. They're really going to sell? Mom asked me what I thought they'd get for it and asked for a name. She said they're spending one last weekend and talking to someone about selling. I don't want to see it go. I don't either. I want to sit here and cry. Well, depending on where you are, that's not a terrible thing to do. I was in the grocery store when she told me. Alyssa shook her head. I wanted to sit down in the middle of the aisle and bawl like a baby. I did cause something of a traffic jam in the dairy section. I'm at work. Taylor was a hotel manager for a swanky hotel in downtown Salt Lake City. Well, you probably shouldn't cry, then. You don't want to scare the guests away. Oh, I want to scare some of them away, Taylor responded. Hang on. 
Alyssa listened to hold music for a minute before her sister came back on the line. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have kept you on the phone so long while you were at work. I'll call you when I know more. And you need to help me work on mom and dad. I think if we all show an interest in the house and going up there, they'll change their minds. They have to. You call the others. We'll all get together and make a plan. Save the lake house. Alyssa smiled. Taylor always made plans, and they were usually viable. Save the lake house. After she ended the call, Alyssa called her other sisters one by one. Next, she called Amanda. Hey, have you talked to mom and dad? Not recently. I mean, I talk to mom every weekend. Why? Did something happen to them? Not at all. They're just thinking about selling the lake house. Not the lake house. Amanda practically shouted. Well, that was unprofessional. I'm finishing up a job. I'm just glad my clients aren't home. Amanda was an interior decorator, and she'd done Alyssa's house. She made everything feel so homey for her, which was exactly what Alyssa had needed. Alyssa often recommended her to clients looking for decorating help. That's what Taylor said. Me too, actually. Taylor thinks we all need to get together and make a plan to talk them out of selling. You up for it? As long as you're hosting. Your house is the biggest. Absolutely. I'll even make some snacks, and we'll have a sister party. Alyssa loved the idea of her lonely weekend being filled with her sisters and plans for keeping the lake house. Sounds good. How's too? Amanda asked. I'll text Taylor and see. I think she's the only one who might be working this weekend. Sounds like a plan. I'll bring soft drinks. You still drink Coke? Alyssa thought for a moment. She should drink Diet Coke, but she didn't like the taste. Yeah, Coke sounds good. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye. Alyssa started a list of what she needed from the grocery store if she was making snacks for her sisters. An impromptu sister party might be just what she needed. The others could call it a planning meeting, but for Alyssa, it felt like a party. She texted Taylor and got an immediate response that too was fine, so she went ahead with her other sisters. She called Kayla next, just going through the order of their births. When her sister answered the phone, Alyssa could hear the sound of power tools in the background. Yeah. Hey, Kayla. I can hear you're still at work, so I'll be quick. Mom and Dad are planning to sell the lake house, and we're having a planning meeting at my house at 2 tomorrow afternoon to find a way to stop them. You in? Absolutely. They can't sell the lake house. I agree. See you tomorrow. Alyssa called Lauren, the youngest, last. She was sure her sister knew of the plans, because she was living with their parents again, but she'd find out. Hey, Alyssa. What's up? So did mom tell you they're planning to sell the lake house? Alyssa asked with no preamble. No. She told me they were thinking about it, but not that they'd decided for sure. I suggested they go up for a weekend, because I figured all the memories would crash down on them and they'd change their minds. Mom asked me for the name of a real estate agent there today, so it doesn't sound like they're changing their minds. They plan to go through with it. Ugh. I don't want them to sell the lake house. Neither do I. So, here's what we're going to do, Alyssa told Lauren what their plans were. Does that work? Yes. I'll be there. Lauren sounded as determined as the rest of them to change their parents' plans. Selling the lake house was not an option. Not for any of them. Alyssa jotted a few more things on her list and got to her feet, heading straight back to the grocery store. They would have a lake house saving party instead of wallowing. 
Now that she had a course of action, she was ready to once again be part of Team Romriel Sisters and save the lake house. Chapter 6 Nick spent all day Saturday boxing up Cammy's things. He was so glad to be rid of her that he didn't even feel sad. Relief was the only word that came to his mind. His friend Ryan came over just before supper time, and he stared at him for a moment. Why are you building a bonfire on your front lawn? Don't you know you can't have bonfires until after the snow melts? You heard, didn't you? Nick asked. His friend wasn't fooling him one bit. Ryan shrugged, his dark hair flopping over his forehead, and he pushed it back with an annoyed gesture. His hair was always flopping into his eyes. I did. Cammy came into the store today, pleading with me to get you to take her back. She said she made one little mistake, and you couldn't stay mad at her about it. Nick laughed. I'd already decided to kick her to the curb when I walked in on her with some dude in my bed. That's not one little mistake. That's a monumental mistake, and the woman needs to be tarred and feathered. I figured it was something like that. You're not the type to just kick her out. Even though I thought you should have done it years ago. So, I'm throwing all the pictures of the two of us together into a fire, and I figured I'd burn some old logs and enjoy myself. I might even make esmores. Nick shrugged. I'm thinking about throwing all the bedding the two of them used on there too. You know there's three feet of snow out there, don't you? I guess I could do it in my burn barrel, but the dramatic flair of making a bonfire in the middle of winter really appeals to me. Ryan laughed. Well, as long as it appeals to you. You want to help? What I want is to go out with my buddy tonight. We can shoot darts over at Max's tavern. It's been a million years since we've done something like that. Kemi never wanted me around, and she sure didn't want to spend an evening without you. Clingy little. I can fill in the gaps, Nick said. Yeah, let's do it. I haven't shot darts in a while. And maybe a game of pool. Does the tavern still make the best chicken fingers in all of Idaho? He realized that he hadn't been there since he'd started dating Cammy two years prior. It was time for him to go to a place he enjoyed with his friend. Sure does. Ryan grabbed Nick's coat from the closet and threw it at him, shrugging into his own. I'm glad you dumped her. It'll be nice to have my buddy back. Sure will. Nick locked up with a new key. He'd changed the locks first thing that morning. Thankfully, he'd had an extra lock on his truck, because he hadn't wanted to face Ryan, who had always been quietly disapproving of Cammy. And Ryan owned the only hardware store for 30 minutes in every direction. Besides, he wasn't about to give his business to the hardware store in Montpelier when he could give it to his friend. So, how's business these days? As Nick drove toward the tavern, the two men caught up on each other's lives. I'm working for the Simmons couple. In Garden City. Mrs. Simmons will not quit coming on to me. Nick described some of the awkward conversations he'd had with Mrs. Simmons in the past few weeks. I decided to keep Cammy around until I finished the job, and then I was getting rid of her. It was easy to say, I'm an engaged man, to get her off my back. Ryan laughed. Mrs. Simmons, huh? She's always seemed a little too wild for her husband. Oh, trust me. That's very true. Nick shook his head. I guess I'll just have to keep reminding her that she's married and tell her I don't believe in cheating. Which was of course true. He just hadn't wanted to have to go there with the sex-crazed woman. So, what's lined up next? I wasn't lining up another job so I could help Cammy pack when I kicked her out. I guess that plan is gone, and I need to find something. If you hear of anyone looking to have a remodel done, you just let me know. I'll handle it. Ryan nodded. I'll keep my eyes and ears open. I always hear when someone wants something done. Well, usually I hear them complaining that they can't do it themselves first, 
but you know I'll turn them on to you as fast as I can. I appreciate it. Nick pulled into the parking lot of Max's, and they both got out, stomping through the snow that was falling on them. First food, then darts, and then pool. I'm going to kick your butt at all of it. Ryan laughed. You're rusty, old man. I'd be surprised if you could figure out which end of a pool stick to use to hit the ball. The tavern was more than fifty years old, but it had changed hands in recent years, and the outside had seen a fresh coat of paint. Inside, the bar stools had been reupholstered with a green fabric, and the darts had been added. There were now televisions in every corner of the place, and there was always a sports game on. Not many women went there, because it wasn't geared toward women. It certainly wasn't a fancy nightclub. Instead, it was a place for men to kick back together and enjoy their evenings after a hard day. Nick had done most of the work alongside their friend, Max. It had definitely been worth the effort, now that he could use it. Nick was greeted by many old friends, most of whom had no idea he'd broken it off with Cammy, and he had no desire to tell them any differently. They plopped down at the bar and ordered, each of them getting a soft drink. Ryan's parents had been killed by a drunk driver in high school, and Ryan had moved in with Nick's family. They'd both promised they would never drink, and to Nick's knowledge, neither of them had ever broken the promise. The tavern wasn't a place where the tourists came, and that was nice for both men. They enjoyed their time together, playing games, eating, and hanging out with other locals. Max came out from behind the bar and threw darts with them until the place got busy and he had to actually work. The three of them had gone to school together, and Nick considered Max one of his closest friends. Everyone in town was thankful for the money that the tourists brought to the economy, but they were glad to see them go. When they switched to shooting pool, they started talking wagers. Loser has to finish packing up all those boxes. Worse. Loser has to sleep with Cammy. Nick said, a grin on his face. Oh, that's low. Good thing her brother's not here. Like her brother is ever in town. He moved to Logan to get rid of the small town feel. So did her parents. I hope she stays there with them. Nick really didn't want to see Cammy all over town. He didn't want to have to deal with her anymore. Why should he? The engagement was broken, and he had washed his hands of her. An old friend of Nick's named Peter heard the way they were talking. You broke things off with Cammy? he asked. Nick nodded. It was time. I'm sure it was. Glad you got rid of her, finally. The stories I hear about the men who came and went from your house. I swear the woman must have been paid for her favors. And you didn't think to tell me? Nick wasn't sure what kind of friend would keep something like that to himself. I didn't think you'd believe me. Well, I believe you today. I found her in bed with another man when I went home a little early yesterday. I guess she's been playing me for a fool for longer than I'd guessed. Peter shook his head. Most men have a blind spot when it comes to girls like Cammy. They have two sides, and only one of them is real. You never saw the real side of her. I know. Nick thought about what his friend had said as he played the next game, though, feeling as if he'd been played for a fool. On the drive back to his cabin, Nick asked Ryan, Did you know she was cheating on me? Ryan shook his head. I heard rumors, but I didn't put any stock in them. If I'd known, I'd have told you. I promise you that. I know you would have. Thanks for getting me out of the house tonight. That was exactly what I needed. A cami is finally gone to celebration. It was high time it happened. After he was alone, Nick packed up the rest of Cammy's things and piled the boxes neatly in front of the door. He'd carry them all out onto the front porch before work on Monday and pray for snow. Chapter 7 the party with Alyssa's sisters went well on Saturday, and they came up with a good solid plan for what to do to keep their parents from selling. 
At first, it was mostly joking around. Suggestions like one of them getting pregnant, even though unmarried, so their parents would have grandbabies to play with at the lake abounded. Lauren said she would blockade herself in the lake house and never leave. Kayla offered to make the house a construction zone, and Amanda said she could redecorate to make the house completely unappealing. They discussed the merits of each suggestion as if they were serious, until one of them couldn't help but burst into laughter. It made for an uproarious time. Finally, they decided to talk to their parents about putting the house on Airbnb so they would all still be able to use it when they wanted. They could hire someone to clean and maintain the lawn, but their parents wouldn't be out money for it. Not that money was a huge issue for them. Even now that their father had retired from his TMJ practice, they didn't have to pinch every penny. He'd worked too hard in his lifetime for that. Alyssa wasn't sure the plan would work, but they'd had lots of snacks and enjoyed themselves anyway. As soon as they were done talking about that, the sisters relaxed. Alyssa's living room easily seated all five of them, and they had sausage rolls, chips and queso, and layered dip to occupy them. No one was complaining. Alyssa had enjoyed having someone to cook for. She didn't like cooking as a daily thing, but cooking for one event was always fun for her. As always, the discussion went to the sisters' love lives. Lauren looked at Alyssa first. Are you still dating Tim? She wrinkled her nose as she said Tim's name. Alyssa sighed. For today, I am. I'm not sure how much longer it's going to last, to be honest with you. Things have been strange between us. She hated to admit she was ready to throw in the towel, but it was all she'd thought of for more than a week. Taylor and Amanda exchanged looks. Is that good or bad? Taylor asked. I'm not sure. On one hand, if I'm going to move on, I want to do it soon. On the other, I put seven years into the relationship. It's time for him to fish or cut bait. Alyssa popped a cake ball into her mouth. She'd hit a bakery the night before to buy them, knowing her sisters would enjoy them, but loving the excuse to eat badly herself. By the end of the weekend, they'd be trying to find the blood in her sugar stream. Amanda smiled. I think it's time to cut bait, whether it's his choice or yours. You don't need to be married to a man you're going to have to support for the rest of your life, you know. I do know. Alyssa shook her head, realizing no one in her life thought much of Tim. I'm trying to decide what to do, and I'm really torn at the moment. I'll figure it out, though. I'm just glad you're finally considering ending it with him, Kayla said. You're getting so thin. We're all worried about the way he has you eating and exercising. It's really good to see you eat people food instead of rabbit food today. Alyssa frowned, realizing her sisters had all been worried about the way she ate. Want to know a secret? she asked, leaning toward Kayla, who was sitting beside her on the couch. Sure. What's the secret? I have emergency junior mints in my car. After a date, I usually scarf them down. All the sisters laughed except Lauren. I hate that you have to eat in secret, Alyssa. It's not healthy. Alyssa was starting to feel ganged up on, and she shrugged. We should play a game. It's been so long since we were all together for any period of time, hopefully her sisters would go for the idea, even though they'd know she was just trying to change the subject. They all loved playing games together. Do you still have Encore? Amanda asked, naming a favorite game they all enjoyed. It had been out of print for years, and they all clung to their copy as best they could. I do. But I get to be on your team. Alyssa knew that her sister had a memory for songs like no one else in the world, and she always wanted to be on her team when they played the singing game together. The sisters quickly divided up into teams, and they played an entire game of encore, which took them several hours. They ended up ordering a pizza and talking until after ten, when the sisters took turns leaving. There were hugs and promises to do it all again soon, 
but they all knew it wouldn't happen. It was a rare thing for them all to take time out of their busy lives to get together, but they were always glad when they did. Alyssa had told the others to leave the mess, and she spent the hour after her last sister left running around picking up their trash from the day. She loaded the dishwasher, pleased that her snacks had gone over so well. The entire day had felt so good to her. She'd been busy laughing with people she loved. When her doorbell rang, she glanced at the clock with a frown. One of her sisters must have forgotten something, and it must have been something important or they wouldn't have come back this late at night. She opened the door wide without looking, surprised to see two police officers standing on her doorstep. Had they been so loud one of the neighbors called the police? She didn't think they had, but they must have been. It was the only reason she could think of that the police would be there. The taller, and older, officer removed his hat. Miss Romriel? Yes, I'm Alyssa Romriel. How can I help you? Now she was nervous. Had one of her sisters been in an accident on their way home from her house? There'd been no alcohol involved, but they had all left late. Are my sisters all right? May we come in? The older officer was obviously taking the lead in the discussion. Alyssa opened the door a little wider, leading them into the living room. It's a bit of a mess. My sisters were here all day, and they just left. I'm cleaning up the last vestiges of the best sister party we've had in a very long time. She smiled at them nervously, wondering why she was talking so much. Please have a seat, Miss Romriel. She knew it was bad, whatever they were there for. She sank onto the couch and watched as the two police officers sat in the overstuffed, flower-printed chairs perpendicular to the couch. What is it? I'm sorry to inform you that your parents were in a car accident a few hours ago. Your father died on impact. Your mother was rushed to the hospital, but she died shortly after the ambulance arrived. I'm very sorry for your loss. Alyssa shook her head. He had to be confused. No, that can't be. They were at the lake this weekend. Yes, the accident happened in Garden City. But my sisters and I figured out how to save the lake house. We spent hours. The officer continued to watch her until it sank into her head. Her parents were just gone. What did saving the lake house matter when her parents would never be in it with her again? She let out a sob, stuffing her fist in her mouth to keep herself from wailing like a child. Gone. No more parents. I, what do I do? She'd never dealt with this type of thing before, and she didn't feel equipped to do it. The kind officer handed her a card with a phone number on it. Call this number, and someone will help guide you through the next steps. Do you know if your parents had a will? She nodded. Yes, of course. Contact the lawyer who represented them, and ask for a reading of the will. He'll help you with the process. It was advice that the man had obviously given many times. The officer got to his feet, and the younger officer followed suit, speaking for the first time. I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. The words were worthless. Everything was worthless now. She saw the officers out and picked up her phone. It was late, but she needed to tell Tim first. He needed to be there for her. She tapped his number on the phone and closed her eyes. He answered the phone, and she could hear loud music in the background. She wasn't surprised he was at a party. It was Saturday night, after all. Hello? Tim, it's Alyssa. What are you doing calling me so late, he asked. He sounded annoyed with her. She frowned. I just wanted you to know that my parents died in a car wreck. Do your sisters know yet? I think you should be calling them, not me. Tim sounded as if he was talking to a small child, questioning her decision to call him and not someone more appropriate. Sure. I'll do that. She hung up and called her sisters. 
she'd go in age order again, because she was on autopilot now. She had to tell everyone who loved mom and dad. Everyone who would grieve with her over the death of her parents. Tim hadn't cared. Why should he? He obviously cared nothing for her any longer, if he ever had. Chapter 8 Alyssa's sisters came over the following morning. All of them looked as shell-shocked as she felt. She threw a huge pot of soup on the stove to feed them all, and they sat for a little while in the living room, just looking at each other. None of them could figure out what to say. Or do. Alyssa swiped away a tear and started the conversation, needing the silence broken because they had to plan a funeral. How on earth were they supposed to plan something of that magnitude while they were still shell-shocked with grief? While we're all here, we need to talk about the funeral. Mom and Dad chose the funeral home and their burial plot, but we need to decide who is speaking and what is happening. Anyone want to sing? They all had sweet voices, so it was truly up to whoever thought they could sing at that time. I'm thinking Wednesday for the service. Their lawyer is planning to come here on Thursday to talk about the will. We all need to be here for that. Taylor swiped a tear from her eye. I have the entire week off, so I'm good to help with whatever. Lauren sniffled. I could use help cleaning out their closets and such. I'm guessing we'll be getting the house ready to sell. Move in with me. You don't need those memories surrounding you. I think right now they'd hurt too much. We'll all go there Saturday and get it cleaned out, once we know what the lawyer has to say. You never know, maybe mom and dad were swimming in debt. Alyssa took her sister's hand in hers and gave it a squeeze. I don't know that any of us need to be alone this week. That got a smile from several of the sisters. Slumber party at Alyssa's. Lauren called, and there were a few chuckles. Remember that night when all the cousins went hunting for lightning bugs together? Kayla asked. We were up really late, which may have been eleven to my child mind, and we all slept in the living room telling stories of the Bear Lake ghost. I think we talked a little about the Bear Lake monster as well, but I can't quite remember for sure on that one. It was a favorite lake topic, though. Amanda grinned. We had the bugs in jars, and we kept them inside our sleeping bags. I tried to read by the light of the bugs, but they just weren't bright enough. Alyssa shook her head. We were all giggling half the night, and Dad finally came out and told us we needed to zip it and get some sleep. Lauren frowned. Why don't I remember this? She obviously felt left out of the memory. Because you were about four, Alyssa told her sister. One of the worst parts of being the youngest is not having all the fun memories the rest of us have. She nudged Lauren with her shoulder as they sat side by side on the couch. What's your favorite memory of the lake? Lauren thought for a moment. I remember being there one May, and we came up expecting to spend the week water skiing, but it snowed instead, so we made snowmen and built snow forts. And we did a little snowmobiling. It was amazing. They all grinned at that. I remember that, Kayla said. I remember a snowball fight, too, and I think it was Alyssa who threw a little too hard and a little too high. And I broke the living room window, and Mom said no more snowballs, because if I was packing them that hard, I was going to give one of my sisters a concussion, and she wasn't making an emergency room trip because we didn't know how to behave when there was snow on the ground. Alyssa found herself laughing, and she surprised herself with it. Was it even okay to laugh right after your parents died? Anyway, the funeral. Kayla raised her hand. I'll sing. But I'm not singing Amazing Grace or anything like that. I'm singing Colin Ray's Love Me. Her whole face crumpled as she named the song, and she buried her face in Lauren's shoulder, because Lauren was on the middle couch cushion. I can't believe they're really dead. Lauren wrapped her arm around Kayla, stroking her shoulder. I can't either. This is crazy. Amanda bowed her head for a moment, 
and when she lifted it, her eyes were bright with unshed tears. What's your favorite memory of Dad? She asked no one in particular. Taylor was the first to respond. Do you remember that first summer when Mom kept us all at the lake with her, and Dad would drive up on Thursday nights for a long weekend? Well, when he got there after being gone one weekend, he tried to teach me to ride one of the water scooters. I almost ran into a boat dock with it, and he was shaking his head at me. He told me that it would be Mom's job to teach me to drive because his nerves couldn't handle it. She shook her head. I giggled and giggled, and then I told Mom, and Mom was laughing hysterically. When Dad came into the kitchen, she looked at him with a straight face and said, I think it's going to have to be your job to teach this girl to drive, Dwight. She just walked into a wall, and I can't be responsible for that. Dad's face went pure white, but he nodded. I don't think he ever realized she was just having fun with him. The sisters laughed, even as they struggled through their tears. I can just see it, Kayla said. Dad would never ask Mom to do something he didn't think he could do himself. Do you remember the time Mom backed into the mailbox at the lake house, and she paid a neighbor to fix the mailbox, but she kept the van in the garage all weekend so Dad wouldn't see it? She got it taken care of while he was at work the next week. We were all sworn to secrecy, and I remember giggling about it with Hannah. Alyssa grinned. Mom always said she never kept secrets from Dad, but I don't know if he ever found out about that fender bender. Probably not. Amanda scooted to the floor and hugged her knees to her, reminding Alyssa of the way she'd sat when they were small. So, Kayla's singing. Does anyone feel up to the eulogy? Alyssa asked. She knew they had to get this planned, whether they wanted to or not. The funeral preparations were the main priority for the day. That and grieving. Lauren sniffed once more. I didn't take all those public speaking classes for nothing. I'll do it. Alyssa typed the note into her phone with her thumbs. I want to tell people not to send flowers. They should donate the money instead. But to what? She had no desire to deal with a million flowers. They would just remind her that their parents were gone. Battered women, Amanda said, avoiding Alyssa's eyes. I think there should be a lot more education on just what kind of behavior qualifies as abuse. Some of the smartest women I know have stayed in abusive relationships for years, feeling like they deserved what they got. I can agree with that. Though Alyssa knew her sister was talking about her, she believed in the cause. The others all agreed, and she made a note. I'm supposed to have a conference call this evening with the funeral home director, so I'd like all the little details lined up. She glanced up at her sisters. Do we want a meal provided? I know it's customary, but I'd rather it just be the five of us grieving together and not a bunch of people we don't know. Taylor tilted her head to one side. I would rather it just be us as well. We'll go to Dad's favorite restaurant, and we can just be together with no one patting us and telling us how sorry they are for our loss. I think that's a brilliant idea, Amanda said. We'll just meet up at the Longhorn in Ogden and hope we can get brandy for our waitress. Dad liked her best. Oh, Dad just liked to eat, Kayla said. Remember that time he tried to make ribs on the grill, and they were burnt? He'd been thinking about those ribs all day, so he took us all the way to North Salt Lake just so he could eat ribs. We were all asleep before we got back to the lake house. Alyssa frowned. What are we going to do with the lake house? None of us wanted it sold, and I would bet Mom and Dad left it to all of us together. And the house in Kaysville, Lauren added. That's two houses. And Mom's car is paid for. I think you get the car, Taylor said to Lauren. You're the only one of us without a new car. Yours is a demolition derby reject. Hey. Be nice to Galahad. That old boat does not deserve to be called Galahad, Amanda said. He should be called Rust Bucket or something. Lauren crossed her arms over her chest as if she was angry. 
I don't like you guys dissing my car, but you're right. I do need a new one. If only for job searches. Maybe I'll start searching for jobs at the lake. I think we should Airbnb the lake house, Alyssa said softly. We all need to think about exactly what we want, and we can talk after Mr. Coons leaves on Thursday. We'll have a better idea of what we need to be discussing then. Do we need to disclose the secret passages on Airbnb? Taylor asked, her eyes full of memories. Remember how none of the cousins knew about the secret passages and they just thought we were the best hide-and-seekers ever? I loved being able to go through the bookcase in the downstairs living room and pop up into the family room upstairs, and from there we could go anywhere. And they thought they were so smart guarding the stairs. Especially Ben. He was such a dork about it. Ben was their cousin, and he was Alyssa's age. He thought he was so smart but he'd never figured out any of the passages. And all of the passages between the bedrooms upstairs? I always giggled when we played Clue because of those secret passages. I was sure he was going to figure it out, but he never did. Amanda shook her head. It's hard to believe he's a doctor now when he was so dense as a kid. Kayla looked far away. My favorite part of being at the lake was always helping mom with the flowers. You complained about it whenever it was your turn. Alyssa said with a frown. I know I did, but looking back at the long talks we each got to have with mom as we helped, I realize it was the highlight of my summers. We each put in an hour of work every day, and my favorite was when I got to sit with mom, surrounded by the beauty she always made sure enveloped the lake house and she would talk to me about anything that was on my mind. Sometimes I just wanted to talk about my dreams of building a treehouse in the big oak tree in the back. Lauren sighed. I loved that treehouse. It had eight floors. It did. Kayla grinned. I could build even then. Dad always called me his favorite son. Is the treehouse even still there? Alyssa asked. It's been so long since I've been to the lake. It is, Lauren said. I was there a few years ago. It's looking a little dilapidated, but I think with a fresh coat of paint and a hammer and nails used by someone who knew how to use them, it would be perfect again. Kayla smiled. I'll make sure to take some the next time I go. Alyssa thought she looked excited at the prospect of working on her first real building project as an adult. As the day wore on, they made the rest of the arrangements for the funeral, but more importantly, they shared memories of their parents at their favorite place in the entire world. The later it got, the more the sisters realized they didn't want to split up. They had all made sure they had off until the following Monday, and they planned to take the time to just be together and grieve. Do you still have real-sized clothes? Amanda finally asked Alyssa. You know, like you wore BT? Alyssa started to ask what BT meant, but she realized it meant before Tim. Her sisters had always measured her life before and after he'd come into her life. I do. In one of the spare rooms. And I have a washer and dryer. And extra toothbrushes and toothpaste and so much room. Please stay. They all knew she didn't want to be alone, but none of them blamed her. They didn't want to be alone either. No, it was a week for the sisters to stay together. I get the green room, Amanda said, getting to her feet and stretching. I'm going to find nightgowns for all of us, and we'll throw the clothes we're wearing into the washer. It won't hurt any of us to wear them two nights in a row. Together, they went about their pre-bedtime routines and they found clothes that fit. They would stay together as long as they could get away with it, because only together could they face the overwhelming grief of losing two of the greatest people they'd ever known. Dwight and Elizabeth Romriel Chapter 9 The day of the funeral was long and arduous, and the sisters were glad they'd made the decision to have a joint funeral for their beloved parents. They couldn't go through this twice in such a short period of time. Kayla sang, and there wasn't a dry eye in the place. Lauren spoke, 
her voice strong and steady, despite the tears running down her face. All five sisters stood in a line as people left the funeral home where the service had been held. Your father saved me from years of migraine pain, one woman stopped to say. Alyssa didn't recognize her, and she doubted her sisters did either, but they heard stories like that over and over as people walked past them, shaking their hands or embracing them, depending on how well they knew them. The funeral home was filled completely, with people standing at the back to pay their respects. It took more than an hour for the five sisters to accept condolences from everyone in the group, and then they drove to the cemetery, where a brief prayer was spoken by the pastor of the church they'd all grown up attending. They had chosen a headstone that was for both parents, because they all felt as if their parents wouldn't want to be separated, even in death. As soon as they had each sprinkled dirt on the caskets, Alyssa led the others to their cars, which had been first in line between the funeral home and the cemetery, and then they followed their plans exactly. They all drove back to Alyssa's house, where they were staying for the week. Everyone had collected their clothes, and they took Alyssa's car to Longhorn. When they walked in, they requested brandy. She was on her way out the door, but she saw the sisters and said, they're mine. I'll stay for them. After they'd been seated, Brandy came over to check on the sisters, showing them pictures from the cruise she'd taken recently with her daughters. What brings you girls in today? Your dad isn't here. Are you allowed to come without him? The words were said jokingly, but only Lauren, who seemed to have a gift for speaking through pain, was able to answer. Mom and Dad were killed in a car accident on Saturday night. We're here to commemorate their lives, rather than eating with a bunch of strangers who tell us how sorry they are. Lauren had tears in her eyes, and Brandy gasped, sinking down into a seat at the table with them. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Brandy reached for the hand of the sister closest to her, Taylor, as she sat, absolutely stunned at the news. I can't believe it. Alyssa nodded. Trust me. We understand. It's all we've been able to say since we got the news. Funeral was today, and reading of the will is tomorrow. I don't even know what to say. I loved your parents. You all know that. I'll be praying for peace for all of you as you go through this. Brandy shook her head. Who gets the job of sorting out the estate? Probably Alyssa, Lauren said. She's oldest and good at stuff like that. We won't know for sure until we've talked to the lawyer, though. Brandy pulled out a pad. What drinks do you want? Let me at least feed you since I can't take your pain away. They all ordered their drinks and talked softly as Brandy hurried away to get them. Even waiters and waitresses loved mom and dad. What are we going to do without them? Kayla asked, her eyes bleak. Alyssa shook her head at her sister. That's not why we're here. We went to the funeral to mourn and to grieve. We're here to have a celebration of their lives as only the people who love them best are able to have. Brandy came with the drinks, catching the last thing Alyssa had said. She had tears in her eyes. I'll start off your celebration by telling you my favorite thing about each of your parents. Dwight was always so giving and generous. Any time he saw a group of police officers, he'd make sure to pay their bill. Same with any of the armed forces. He was kind. One of the busboys spilled an entire plate of food on him, and he just cleaned it off, didn't get angry, and didn't ask for any money off his check. Elizabeth was so gentle, and she loved you girls more than anything else on this earth. She would talk about each of you. When Lauren graduated from college, she brought me pictures of her in her cap and gown and all five of you together. She called you her precious girls. Everyone in this place knew who they were, and they were loved by everyone whose lives they touched. All five sisters had tears in their eyes at the beautiful, unexpected tribute. Thank you, Kayla said. We needed to hear how other people saw them today. Brandy brushed away her own tears. 
I'll be back in a few minutes to get your order, but there's no hurry. I'm here as long as you girls are. She hurried away from them, going back into the kitchen. She obviously needed to compose herself as well. Alyssa smiled. Let's figure out what we want to eat so we don't keep brandy forever, and then we'll go around the table. First everyone can say what they thought was dad's best quality. And then we'll do it all again for mom. We're celebrating the wonderful people who gave birth to us today. We can grieve more tomorrow, but today is for loving them. It was an hour and a half and much laughter and tears later when they left the restaurant. They'd had six different people who worked for the place come to the table and offer their condolences, all of them mentioning what they would miss most about their parents. On the drive back to Alyssa's house, they stopped by the grocery store and bought all of the comfort food they could find. They needed to grieve, and they would do it together, the same way they'd done so many other things together. As a family. After the groceries were put away, they all changed into comfortable clothes. No more black dresses for them. No, they were going to stay together and handle things the best way they knew how. It was the only answer. Chapter 10 On Thursday, Mr. Coons, their father's longtime friend and attorney, was at Alyssa's house to read the will. He counted heads to make sure all the sisters were there before beginning. I'm not going to read it word for word because there's no need for that. The will is simply a practical list of who gets what. I'm sure all of you will appreciate that. He glanced down at the document in his hand. Lauren, you get your mother's Subaru Forester. They wanted you to have something safe to drive and not that old rail trap. Lauren smiled slightly. I can just hear Dad saying that, too. He kept trying to buy me a car, but I didn't want to take charity. Well, you have no choice now. Mr. Coons looked back at the will. Alyssa, your parents would like you to deal with the sale of their home, and whatever money comes from it needs to be split five ways for all of you to share. Alyssa nodded. I expected that. It would keep her busy as well. It was good that it had been her assignment, and the sisters would work together to get everything cleaned out and sold. He went on to list many of the things their parents had accumulated over the years. Alyssa was to get their mother's china collection, and Taylor was to receive their bedroom suite, which she had always admired. Each daughter received something that she considered special, but they all waited with bated breath to hear what was said about the lake house. Now, for the house at Bear Lake. He smiled as he watched each sister lean forward. Your father was very specific about that house. He wants all of you to own it together, or he wants it sold and the money split evenly among you. I got the impression he wanted you to share it. The sisters all exchanged glances. It was what they wanted, point zero. The last thing Mr. Kuhn said surprised all of them. I'm going to read this last line to you, and then I'll be done. To my daughter Alyssa's best friend, Hannah Baldwin, I leave the sum of $200,000. My daughters won't miss it, and that girl has worked harder than anyone should have to earning money for her bookstore. Hannah, you've always been a sixth daughter to me, and know that we loved you with all our hearts. Use the money wisely. The rest of the assets your parents had will be liquidated and split evenly among you. Are there any questions? The sisters exchanged looks. Who will see to the selling off of the assets? Alyssa asked. She knew she was selling the house in town, but she wasn't sure if she was supposed to be in charge of that as well. I was asked to do that, and I'll retain a small fee for my services. Your father and I worked all that out years ago. Alyssa got to her feet and shook hands with Mr. Coons. Thank you so much for your time. Your father was a wonderful man, and he will be missed by so many. Alyssa walked him to the door after accepting a copy of the will. She was actually excited to call Hannah and let her know about the money which had been left to her. She knew her friend would be ecstatic. 
well, she'd be ecstatic with a portion of the news she had to share. Walking back to the couch, she sat down between Taylor and Kayla. Does anyone mind if I call Hannah and let her know what was decided? And then we'll discuss the lake house. Taylor had a half-smile on her face. I have some ideas for the lake house. I just hope everyone will hear me out before they start arguing. That sounds ominous, Amanda said. You worry me, Taylor. Alyssa smiled as she left the room and walked down the hallway and into her bedroom. The room was decorated in lilac and white. It was definitely a female room. Her bed was king-size, and she had a row of shelves above her head. She and Amanda had shopped for the furniture together, and Amanda had taken it from there. Sitting on her bed, Alyssa dialed her friend's number. Hannah came on the phone right away. You caught me between jobs. What's up, buttercup? The happiness in Hannah's voice to hear from her struck Alyssa as odd until she remembered that her friend hadn't heard the news yet. So, I have bad news and good news. If you have ten minutes to pull over, it might be best. Alyssa didn't want to risk another accident by telling her friend while she was driving. Hannah had always been close to Alyssa's parents. I have time. Just give me a second. I'll pull into a gas station. There was a moment, and then Hannah said, but you're scaring me making me pull over. I've done it. Mom and Dad were killed in a car wreck on Saturday night. Alyssa couldn't soften the truth. She'd given the news one too many times that week, and she just didn't have it in her to beat around the bush about it. What? No. Hannah sounded truly distraught. How can there be good news after that? Well, the will was read today, and my parents left you two hundred grand to go toward your bookstore. They think it's time you started building it and stopped working so many jobs. Hannah said nothing for a moment, and Alyssa waited. Hannah? I don't even know what to say. I'm shocked and broken about your parents, but that kind of money? You and your sisters should split that between you. I wasn't their child to leave anything to. Alyssa had expected that answer, but she wasn't accepting it. No. Dad was very specific that he wanted you to have it and what he wanted you to use it for. Besides, he said you were his sixth daughter and he'd always thought of you that way. They left us plenty. I promise. I'm sure. Well. I don't even know what to say. I'm so sorry they died, LYSS. I can't imagine what you must be feeling. Hannah's soft voice, commiserating with her had the tears flowing for Alyssa again. I've had several days to process it, and my sisters and I have been together almost constantly, working through our feelings about it. Alyssa didn't say she was fine, because she was far from fine, but she was doing better than she had been a few days before. I wish I could hug you, but that's not happening from this distance. You girls need to come to the lake soon and see me. You know? I think that's going to happen. We've talked about happy memories from the lake house all week. I think we need to go there and grieve together. Or maybe party together. We seem to be alternating between the two. Hannah laughed softly. I'm not surprised. You and your sisters have always been a bit odd. Oh, please. Have you looked in a mirror lately? Alyssa felt a lot better now that she'd told Hannah. When she'd called Tim, she just needed to share with someone who wouldn't grieve as much as she had. He'd refused to allow that, though. Well, I'm going to let you go and head to Cooper's. I have a full night ahead of me. Not for much longer, Alyssa said, relieved that her father had included her friend in his generosity. She knew Hannah would make good use of the money. Alyssa walked back into the living room, joining her sisters, who were discussing food. I just want to order another pizza, Lauren said. None of us feel like cooking. Or we could do something from Grubhub. Or order something else. 
I just don't want to cook. Alyssa took a spot on the floor. I'm up for whatever. Pizza sounds pretty good, actually. Her years of pizza deprivation were catching up with her, and she refused to suffer through any more of it. Pizza was the answer. They talked and discussed what they wanted, and Taylor put in an order for two large pizzas. As soon as she was finished, she folded her hands on her lap, seeming nervous. I have an idea about the lake house. What's the idea? Alyssa felt a bit skeptical. Her sister looked like she was up to something. It didn't take long before every sister was looking at Taylor, waiting to hear her idea. Let's turn it into a bed and breakfast. We can all move to the lake. There's enough room for all five of us and still have seven guest rooms to rent out. More if we're willing to double up. I can run the place. We can do a total remodel and hire someone to work with Kayla on it. I think we all need a fresh start, and this week has showed me that we need each other. A lot. Alyssa frowned. I'm not licensed in Idaho. She couldn't give up her job to help run a band B. Besides, it shouldn't take all five of them to run it. How hard would it be to get licensed there? You know your stuff. Shouldn't you just have to take a test or something? Probably. But what about Tim? Alyssa knew her sisters didn't like him, but all she could think about were the seven years they had together. Why would she give up seven years now? Dump the jerk. I want to use worse language, but I'm a lady, Lauren said, folding her hands demurely on her lap. They all laughed at that. I don't know if I'm ready, Alyssa said honestly. Amanda frowned at Alyssa. How long has it been since the two of you went out together when he didn't need money? How long since he paid for a meal? I, Alyssa had no answers. She truly couldn't remember. How long since you went out with him and he didn't make you feel like you were lacking? Kayla asked. You're a beautiful woman who has gotten much too thin, thanks to his machinations. You need to be taking care of yourself, not worrying about him. Listening to her sisters, Alyssa realized that they were right. He had messed with her head for altogether too long. All right. I'm in. You are? Taylor asked, looking shocked. I thought you would be the hardest to convince. They went around the room, and each sister agreed to do it. I like the idea of working together, Amanda said. I want to turn the rooms into themed rooms. Famous romantic couples, or something. I'll think on it. I seriously can't wait to get started. I have two more jobs I've agreed to do here, and I'll be ready to go. Well, and Alyssa will have to sell my house. Alyssa laughed. I have a feeling I'll be selling lots of houses. Starting with my own. Slowly, their plans started to take shape. When the doorbell rang, Alyssa jumped up to get the pizza. She opened the door and was surprised to see Tim. What are you doing here? she asked. She could almost feel her sister straining to listen to the conversation. He only stopped by when he wanted something. Hopefully, he hadn't put it together that her parents were dead and she was due to inherit. Tim frowned. Can't a boyfriend go to see his girlfriend? She shook her head. No, because you're not my boyfriend anymore. You wouldn't even talk to me when I found out my parents had just died. What kind of boyfriend would do that? I'm afraid I'm completely done with you. Telling him was easier than she'd thought it would be, and it felt so freeing. You can't mean that. We've dated for years. Yes, we have, and you have ruined my life in a lot of different ways. Not only am I breaking things off with you, I'm moving to Idaho, and I don't plan to see you again. She started to close the door, but he put his foot in the way. Wait. I know you're done with me, and I guess I can understand that, but can't we at least stay friends? No, I don't think we can. Friends accept each other for who they are. They don't expect them to make changes to be seen with them. 
Alyssa knew she wouldn't have had the courage to say everything if her sisters hadn't been sitting right there, listening to her. But they gave her the strength she needed. Well, if we can't be friends, can I at least get one last loan? I need a thousand dollars. My car is about to be repossessed. Alyssa was just about to say no when she felt someone walk up behind her and close the door. Tim's foot was still in the door, and he yelled ouch as he got out of the way. She turned to see Taylor standing behind her. Until that moment, Alyssa hadn't realized she was shaking. Taylor hugged her. It's over. Tim's gone, and you don't ever have to see him again. Taking a deep breath, Alyssa nodded, feeling very fragile for a moment. Thank you. Go sit, and I'll get the pizza when it comes. Taylor pushed her toward the living room. Lauren, get some plates and napkins. Amanda, you're on drinks. We're having an Alyssa finally dumped Tim party, and we're going to plan our bed and breakfast. If we hurry, we might be able to have it open by June 1st for tourist season. It's going to be a lot of work, but I think we can do it. Alyssa moved to sit in one of her chairs, and she thought about it. She could see how they could make it work. It wouldn't be easy, but with five of them working together, anything was possible. At least for a while, they'd all be sharing a house. That worried her, remembering some of their early fights, but most of them had means to stay elsewhere if necessary. They'd make it work, 